Hey, welcome to Getting It Done North of Seven. This is something new that I have never done on this channel before. This channel is all about doing stuff yourself, DIY, fixing things around your home, home improvement, uh, whether it's your home, whether it's just your motorbikes or your ATVs or your driveway, just fixing everything around your own home. But now I'm gonna be doing something I've never done and I've kind of debated about doing is painting and drywall repair. And the only reason I debated about it because I kind of thought, well, maybe there's so much videos about that, it's oversaturated, but I shouldn't think that way. I should just give my own look out on it and that's what I'm going to do. So what we're starting here is a big, big project. We're gonna be painting ceilings and walls, particularly the whole house. Um, it's a bungalow, so we're gonna be doing the main floor. There's only two rooms that I don't have to do because I've already done them. So we're basically the whole main floor and then we're gonna be doing the basement. So we're gonna be doing popcorn ceilings. We're gonna be painting those. I used to have skylights in the house. I did a temporary fix on those about three years ago. So we're gonna be doing a real fix on them. Either I'm gonna do it or I'm gonna hire someone to do it. But I'm gonna try and do it myself, I think. So we're gonna be doing like a patch in the ceiling where the skylight was. And we're gonna be blending in the popcorn ceiling. And then we're gonna to have to paint it, of course. I'll take you around really quick and show you some fixes I had to make because of those skylights. But first, I just wanna say this is going to be a series of videos. I'm not gonna be all one day, right? Cause this is a huge job. But I'm gonna share tips and tricks I know about painting, not so much drywalling, um, but painting. Um, I think I'm a fairly decent painter. I'm definitely not a pro, but I can share some good tips and tricks for beginners. I'm gonna show you patching holes where you may have had pictures or mirrors or other things hanging on your walls and you don't want those holes there anymore. I've already patched up most of the holes here on the main floor, but there will be more to go. I'll show you what I've done and uh, yeah, so we'll just get started. I'll show you around really quick and we'll start this job today. Gonna be, pat I've already patched up some holes on the walls that I'm going to, the rooms I'm gonna be doing, like the living room, dining room, and this hallway. And we're just gonna put some primer on those. And it really does matter how you put the primer on. I'm gonna show you really quick. So first I'm gonna start off with this hallway here. Here was a skylight and you can see how I finished it. I framed it and I just put a piece of drywall up about three inches and it's inset. And I like to have that flush again with the popcorn blended in. And I hopefully, hopefully it can be done right. I think it can be so that you can barely tell that it has been fixed. So what happened was all skylights will leak. I don't care what anybody tells you, eventually a skylight will leak and there's moisture and everything that will run down your walls. It'll bubble your paint, it'll bubble your drywall. And that's what happened here, mostly here. The water ran down from the skylight down to here. And this is where the joint was between two sheets of drywall. And there's tape here. Well, it had bubbled up and it had looked pretty lousy for the last four years. And uh, I, what I did was I scraped the, the loose paint off, the loose tape I cut out so that you can still see the joint here. And I filled it in and I kind of made a mistake here. Where is it? I thought it was lifting here a little bit, but we might be all right. I have to go over this again. I think we're going to be okay. I thought maybe the tape was lifting here, but it looks like it hasn't. So I'm just going to put more coats of drywall mud on there, drywall compound, and smooth that out so that you can hardly tell. Then we'll prime it and paint it. I've been patching holes like this where pictures or mirrors have been hung. So right here, we had there was a big mirror from the previous owners that was here. And they used those big uh, steel, I guess like anchors or what do you call those? Like screw inserts that were in there. I took them out and then I patched the holes up. They were pretty big. So I got it all sanded down nice now and we're gonna prime these today. And that's gonna be our first tip today. I'm gonna show you how to prime these properly. I don't use a brush. I actually use a roller because I find when you use a brush, you can see the brush strokes even after you've painted. You can see it, especially if the light hits it a certain way. And seeing these holes are near a window, you can see the window here. That's when you start seeing your mistakes or blemishes in the walls when the light, the light from the window shines in on them. 
So yeah, we're gonna roll our primer on there so it's the same texture and it will hide any blemishes. You won't see any major blemishes if there is any at all and you won't see the brush strokes from the paintbrush. So what I have here is a brand new can of primer. Basically, it was shaken two days ago, but I'll just give it a quick stir, just the same. And we're just gonna wipe off our stir stick. The primer is fine. So actually you can use your tray here. And I put a, an old bed sheet. I save them sometimes for painting and uh, use it as a drop cloth. So we're gonna use a brush and I told you we're gonna paint with a roller, but the brush just makes it easier to clean your can and your tools. And then we'll just wash it quickly after. And I suggest if you're gonna be using paint brushes when you paint, don't get those cheap ones from the dollar store or Home Depot. Use good brushes like this one here, I think I paid almost $20 for. And get a good brush with, a, with the nice hairs on it. They're fine, they're smooth. And you're gonna wash them. And I'll show you how to use your brush, but I'm gonna show you how to wash your brushes. And when you're paying that kind of money, you wanna wash them. But it gives you such a better job. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna take the paint and we're gonna put a little bit in our tray. And we don't need much, that's probably too much. And hopefully you can see this, but I'm gonna go with my brush like this. Just makes everything go quicker and easier and you don't have big clumpy messes of dry paint on your can. And you just run that brush around in here and pick up all the wet paint as best you can. It just makes your life easier later on when you go to open cans and reuse the paint. You'll see in the stores too, there's all kinds of fancy tools for doing painting. This is, this is the basic way of doing stuff, but it's the easiest and it's the most efficient, I believe. There's a lot of gimmicky tools out there. So you can see that's all cleaned up now. That's good enough. You can put your lid back on. We're gonna pound it on so it stays fresh. Now we have our tray here full of paint. We don't need this. We're gonna wash this up a little bit later when we go back after we do our priming and we're gonna wash our roller as well and our cage. And we're gonna wash our tray. Okay, so I put a liberal amount on my roller. And I'm just gonna go slowly across here. And you'll see that's quite a bit of paint, right? So I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna do this next. And it's not as, the paint isn't as thick. And go slowly with primer because primer will flick off your roller pretty quickly. We're just going to blend this all in nicely. And one coat should do it. But if we need a second coat, we'll put a second coat on, but hopefully we won't. So you just smooth it out, make sure there's no hard edges, like on the edges here, that will show later on after you paint, put your actual wall paint on, top and bottom. So make sure, make sure there's no edges there. So this is basically for beginners, people that want to do their own painting, because it costs a lot to hire a painter. And if you think you can do your own, I can show you really quick how to get decent at it and you're not making messes and you're doing a good job. So I'm gonna go around and finish the rest and on the next video, we'll continue on with probably preparing the popcorn ceiling to be painted and maybe some painting of the popcorn ceiling. Also, I want to add when you do drywall repairs, um, you fix holes or like you do a repair like I did in that hallway wall, you have to put primer on top of that drywall compound after you're all done sanding. It has to be treated with primer. You, If you paint over that, you're always going to see it. So this is why you prime all these spots 
before you start your painting. The prep work that you put into the job before you start the actual painting will pay off at the end. Because if you don't do your prep work properly, you're going to see blemishes in your paint and your walls and you won't be happy with it. So just keep in mind when you start a painting job to go around and fix anything, any holes or whatever it is bubbling in your paint, fix everything first and just allow that amount of time to put all your effort into prepping because that's the most important step. It's the foundation of doing a good paint job. So thanks for watching and don't forget to follow this series. I'll put it in the playlist and you can just subscribe to the channel and save the playlist for you to watch later. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.